before we go further, we should know what is actually the first law of thermodynamics, right? So the first law of thermodynamics is very simple. Energy can neither be destroyed nor created. It can only change its form. So for example, heat energy is needed to rotate a turbine. So from heat energy, it will be channeled into another device so the energy will be transformed into another form which is mechanical energy so from that mechanical energy it will be back to heat energy which is it will be released into the surroundings from this example we can see that the energy cannot be destroyed so first law of thermodynamics can also be known as conservation of energy principles so let us look here so the net change in the total energy is equal to the difference uh, between the total energy entering and total energy leaving the system. I did remember that I have uh, shown to you one example. If, if let's say we have uh, uh, one system, okay, whatever energy exerted on that system and whatever energy that is produced by the system, we should take into account all of this energy. So that's why we call it as total energy. So same goes to here. The first law of thermodynamics equation, it tells us that the total energy entering the system minus the total energy leaving the system is equal to the net change in the total energy of the system. So it is represented by this equation, E in minus E out, it is equal to delta E system. This relationship is applicable for any kind of system. Okay, either it is open system or closed system but for today we are going to see the first law of thermodynamics with the approach of closed system this is the energy balance for a system so any kind of system we will use or we will derive the equation for first law of thermodynamics starting from this energy balance so E in minus E out is equal to delta E system so we look one by one, E in minus E out is actually the energy transfer of a system. And we know already the open system and closed system, the energy that can be transferred in and transferred out is different. So the different is for closed system, we already know that no mass will be transferred in and also transferred out. So the only energy that can be transferred in and transferred out is heat or work. So for closed system, no mass transfer in and also transfer out. But for open system, all of the energy can transfer in, transfer out. It is including heat, work and also mass. It is open system, right? So mass can freely transfer in and also transfer out. So we go to the delta E system. It is easy for you to understand the delta E system is the total energy. You still remember what is total energy? So the total energy is the summation of uh, macroscopic energy and also microscopic energy. If you don't remember, please go back to the chapter before this, right? So the total energy is actually the macroscopic plus the microscopic energy. The macroscopic energy is delta Ke and delta Pe. But the microscopic energy is the delta U. So from here, the delta E system we can conclude as delta U plus delta Ke plus delta Pe. Okay, this is the illustration on how uh, the first law of thermodynamics works in a, in a closed system. So this is closed system. We should take into account all of the energy that is, that is exerted into the system or produced by the system. So we look here. This is closed system. The only energy that can be transferred in and also transferred out is work or heat. So we should take into account all whether the heat is going in or going out from the system. We look here. W out, Q out. W in, Q in. We should consider all of the energy that is related to this closed system. The Q out, W out is E out the Q in and W in is E in. So this is energy balance for closed system. 
okay so we start with this general energy balance which is e in minus e out is equal to delta e system for closed system only q and w is involved because of this is closed system no mass will be transferred in and transferred out so that is why we can see here no mass balance is included for this closed system for e in minus e out we can conclude that the q and also w is available for this side so q minus w is equal to delta e so the q minus w is actually q net in minus w net out and for this side we have the delta e system and the delta e system is actually the total energy of macroscopic and also microscopic energy so the microscopic delta u the macroscopic is delta ke and delta PE. So you should know what does it mean by delta U, delta KE and delta PE. So delta U is actually M U2 minus U1. U at state 2 and U minus U at state 1. KE is, we should know what is the equation for KE. And it is actually 1 over 2 M V at state 2 to the power of 2 minus V at state 1 to the power of 2. What is this V? this v is not volume but this v is actually velocity because of this is kinetic energy right so it relates with the velocity all right next is delta pe this is the equation for delta pe mgz z2 is the height z is height height at state 2 minus height at state 1 so this ke and pe if the question told you that uh, that system is stationary or it is not moving so automatically ke and pe can be neglected all right so for e in minus e out we can deduce as q minus w or q net in minus w net out so for delta e system we can deduce as delta u plus delta ke plus delta pe so when we sum them up together we get the first law of thermodynamics for closed system okay uh, whatever question that you get when you realize that that equation is closed system please use this first law of thermodynamics equation do not use the other right this is the overall first law of thermodynamics for closed system so you will be questioned why it can be q net in minus w net out right so look at here okay for energy balance for any system it is E in minus E out is equal to delta E system. This is the general energy balance. But in this E in, we have Q and also W, right? So Q in plus W in. Okay, this is E in. But for E out, it is Q out plus W out. So when we substitute into this equation and we rearrange back, so we will get Q net in minus W net out. Okay, uh, I hope you can try to derive back uh, this. Okay, substitute all this into this. So we will get this Q net in minus W net out. Uh, so delta E system is the summation of macroscopic, macroscopic, and also the microscopic. Delta U plus delta Ke plus delta Pe. All right, so uh, for the first law of thermodynamics equation, it will be deferred through its conditions. Uh, so before this, we know the condition of the system. Okay, we have uh, isobaric, we have isochoric, and etc. So what will this condition affect the equation of first law of thermodynamics? Okay, first we look here. Just like I mentioned to you before this, when the system is stationary, the delta ke and delta pe is automatically neglected, or it is equal to zero. So for stationary system, uh, the first law of thermodynamics equation will be simplified into this. Q net in minus W net out is equal to delta U. For constant uh, volume process or isochoric process, we know that the delta V is zero, no change in volume. So when it is process, uh, isochoric process, we know that the devices that, that will be used is rigid tank or piston cylinder okay so that's why when the delta v is equal to zero automatically the wb wb is boundary work is equal to zero so when we see here w here is 
is equal to WB. So WB is zero. So this first law of thermodynamics uh, equation can be further simplified into Q net in is equal to delta U. For constant pressure is isobaric. Delta P is equal to zero. For piston cylinder device, uh, W is equal to WB. So from this equation, we can simplify it into this, right? The W net out is equal to WB because it is isobaric. So it is equal to delta U because of it is a stationary system. Okay, delta U. From this equation, we rearrange until we get Q is equal to delta U plus WB. And we know that the boundary work is equal to PDV, right? And you can see that the boundary work is equal to PDV or P delta V. So when we have this equation, delta U plus P delta V, it is actually uh, similar with the enthalpy definition. So this equation, it will define as enthalpy. So we can further simplify it into delta H. For first law of thermodynamics, for constant pressure, it should be like this. Q net in is equal to delta H, right? Uh, if you are given with a question, even though it is a piston cylinder or rigid tank, but the pressure is constant. Automatically, the first law of thermodynamics equation will become Q net in is equal to delta H. Okay, now we go to the heat capacity. So the heat capacity is denoted as C. For constant volume process, it is denoted as CV. And this CV, it can be related with the change of internal energy. U is internal energy. So this CV can be related to uh, the change of uh, internal energy towards temperature. So we can further simplify this equation into du is equal to CV uh, dt. Okay, after we do the integration for this, it will become like this, right? So this du is actually delta u. So delta u is actually u2 minus u1. u at state 2 minus u at state 1 is equal to, okay, the product of integration for this, it is equal to CV average T2 minus T1, okay, CV average T2 minus T1. So that's why for energy balance for constant volume process, Q is equal to delta U or CV delta T. So this heat capacity is actually uh, to support this condition just now. Next, we go for constant pressure process. The CP can be related with the change of enthalpy. So it can be uh, simplified into this. DH is equal to CP dt. Okay? When we do the integration for this equation, it will become like this. Delta H is equal to H2 minus H1. Delta H at state 2 minus delta H at state 1 is equal to the product of the integration. CP average T2 minus T1. From this equation, it will support our condition just now okay so that's why q is equal to delta h is equal to cp delta t okay uh, so it is equal to equation just now. basically the equation for first law of thermodynamics for both open and also closed system are quite similar just that there is only one character that is different. So what is the character? Let us look together. So for open system, we need to know first what is the concept of open system. So before this for closed system, only Q and also W, which is work and also heat that can be transferred in and transferred out of the system. But for open system, there's no restriction. All heat, work and also mass can transfer in and transfer out freely from this system so this is figure for open system and we can see here all q w and mass can freely transfer in and also transfer out from this system so throughout this topic we are going to analyze what is the mass balance and also the energy balance for open system so to simplify the mass and also energy balance we need to have two consideration first we should consider this system is undergoing steady flow process. So for second one, the conservation of mass principle should be firstly defined before we define the energy balance. Next, we look 
what is steady flow process? When we have an open system, we can see the mass, Q and also W can freely move in and also move out from that system. Because of it is steady, there is no change of mass in and also mass out. So the amount of mass that will go in and also the mass that will go out will just similar. So that is why we can see here there is no change of mass and it is equal to zero. Same goes to the total energy. When it is steady flow process, the change in total energy will also be zero. So first, we look at the conservation of mass principle or the mass balance. Because of this is open system, we should consider on the mass balance because of there is mass that will go in and also go out from the system. So first, we look at this equation. It is like the first law of thermodynamics equation because we want to apply the first law of thermodynamics. So that is why the derivation of mass balance should start equally. So we start with the total mass entering minus total mass leaving is equal to net change in mass. M in is equal to total mass entering, M out is total mass leaving. It is equal to net change in mass, which is delta M C V. But because of this is steady flow process, so the delta M C V should equal to zero. We have to remember if we consider this process is steady flow process this delta mcv should be considered as zero so and up it will become like this the summation of mass in is equal to summation of mass out so next the conservation of energy principle or the energy balance we are going to derive the energy balance for first law of thermodynamics for open system so first we look here we always start with the energy balance for any system we start with this E in minus E out is equal to delta E system and we consider as the steady flow process so the delta E system should equal to zero so when we rearrange it is equal to E in is equal to E out so E in whatever energy that is coming into the system is equal to whatever energy that is coming out from the system so for open system we should consider all heat work and also mass because of this is open system and we have to consider on mass as well so before this if we look at the first law of thermodynamics for closed system there are only q and also w and this is open system then we should include as well the mass and the mass is equal to the summation of mass and also theta and this theta is actually the equation for flowing fluid in which in this equation it includes PV plus the internal energy plus the kinetic energy and also the potential energy so we substitute into the equation it will become like this Okay, so this one is for in and this one is for out. So inside this equation, we have PV plus U plus V to the power of 2. This V is velocity over 2 plus GZ. Okay, but this PV plus U, it defines the enthalpy. So PV plus U is equal to enthalpy. So same goes to this side. Okay. So then we rearrange until we get Q net in minus W net out. It is similar as the first law of thermodynamics equation for closed system, right? So if you notice in here, we have already replaced the PV plus U with enthalpy here. So this is enthalpy exit and this is enthalpy inlet. So when we rearrange back, we will get this simplified equation. So what is the difference between the first law of thermodynamics for closed system and also the open system? If you notice, for closed system, here it is delta U. But for open system, we replace it with delta H. And of course, it should be in red. So that's why we have dot here. So this dot is actually red. So this Q is heat rate work is in red so the delta p is also in red same goes to ke and also pe so this is the overall first law of thermodynamics for our open system so do not get confused with the first law of thermodynamics for closed system because of open system we are dealing with the flowing streams so 
There are three measurements of flow. First is velocity. When the mass is going in and also going out, we can measure the velocity of the mass that is going in and also the velocity of the mass that is going out. Next is volumetric flow rate. So how much volume that will enter the system per unit time? So we will record as the volumetric flow rate here. So V0, the knot is actually rate, okay, flow rate. It is equal to VA. This V is actually velocity and A is area. Next, we have also mass flow rate. The M dot is denoted as the mass flow rate. So it is equal to rho V. We can relate with density and also the volumetric flow rate. So after we derive, we will get this equation. So actually, this equation is very useful when you are doing your tutorial. So we have already know what is the first law of thermodynamics equation for open system. So now, let me show you what are the devices that are operated under this steady flow process. So these are the devices that operated under steady flow process. We have nozzle, diffuser, throttling valve, turbine, compressor, mixing chamber, and also heat exchanger. So when you get a question with all of these devices, it means that that question is actually open system. So when it is open system, do not get confused to use which first law of thermodynamics equation. If you use the first law of thermodynamics equation for closed system, in order to answer any question that relates with this device, so you will be wrong. So should not make mistake. So first we go to nozzles and also diffusers. Basically nozzles and diffuser are the same device. Just that the purpose of that device is different. For nozzle, it is to increase the velocity. But for diffuser, it is to increase the pressure. Both nozzles and also diffuser is very simple. Okay, it is just the flow of the mass through this nozzle and also diffuser. Just that, the purpose is different. So, from first law of thermodynamics equation, we have Q, we have W, we have delta H, Ke and also Pe. So, from this equation, we have to identify which character should be neglected. So, we look one by one. Q and also W. Because of it is just a flow, there's no Q and also W involved but it is always depends on the question. If let's say the question mentioned that this nozzle will release some amount of heat, so we should not consider Q is equal to zero. And also PE is equal to zero because of no potential energy is involved. But we should include Ke because of this nozzle itself, the purpose is to increase the velocity. So that is why in this Ke equation, it involves velocity, right? So that is why we cannot neglect this kinetic energy. So we look first at the mass balance. So the mass balance is very simple. Just M in is equal to M out. M in is equal to M out. So we identify which one is the inlet and which one is the outlet. So we just balance it. M in is equal to M out. So for energy balance, after we have neglect out all the character that is not involved, which is Q, W and so PE. So the energy balance, it will become like this. It only involves enthalpy and also kinetic energy. So after we rearrange, so we will get the, the velocity here. So basically in the nozzle, we want to check the velocity at the outlet of the nozzle. So that is why we rearrange the equation until we get the, the velocity here. Next, we go to turbine. Turbine is actually a device to generate electricity, but it's going to need fluid to move the turbine. So this is the cross-sectional diagram for turbine. So we can see here, there are stationary blades and also the rotating blades inside this turbine. So this rotating blade will be rotated by the aid of the fluid. So once the blade is rotating, so it will produce a work. So this rotation we can consider as work. So basically in power plant, turbine will be used to produce electricity. So how to rotate the turbine? 
we will use steam so steam will be enter the chamber that consists of turbine so this turbine with the aid of the steam it will rotate so once it is rotate it will also rotate the generator so that generator will produce electricity so if you get one question that asks you about turbine it is better for you to draw this diagram so we should know that this turbine is producing work it is produce work so that is why the direction of w is going out from the turbine you have to make sure that you draw this diagram correctly especially the direction of the energy so if let's say in a question it use steam to rotate the turbine so the inlet and also the outlet of the steam you will draw as one inlet and also one outlet so you have to remember this is turbine and turbine will produce work so the direction of w should go out from the turbine it should direct like this so as usual in the first law of thermodynamics equation so we have to identify which one should be neglected okay first we look ke okay the change in ke is too low so that is why it is neglected next pe the pe is also neglected because of the turbine is not moving up and down so that's why pe is zero for q it is also neglected but it is always based on question so for mass balance for turbine it is similar just mass in is equal to mass out but for energy balance after we have neglected out all the character that is not involved in this turbine so it will become like this so ke and pe is equal to zero so for energy balance it will become like this it will only consist of enthalpy and also w okay but this w because of it is coming out so this w should be negative so that is why after we rearrange and we put at the right hand side it will become positive here so the direction is very important so it will determine whether that energy is negative or positive like this the direction of this w is going out from this turbine so once it is going out so means that the sign for this w is negative same goes to heat that is absorbed or released from this turbine if the heat is absorbed into the turbine so means that that q is positive when it is released from this turbine so means that that q is negative okay next we go to compressor this compressor is different from turbine yes it has something that is rotated inside the compressor but we can see the difference here is the direction of work you just imagine the compressor of your aircon it's not going to operate by itself unless we switch on the electricity so means that the compress so means that the compressor it's going to need electricity in order for the compressor to be operated it's not going to operate by itself unless we supply the electricity into the compressor then after that it will operate so same goes to this this is compressor and you have to remember it's going to need electricity so that is why the direction of w is going into the compressor so because of it is going into the compressor so the sign for this w is positive so as usual we neglect what is not involved in the first law of thermodynamics equation so q pe and also ke but this q it is still according to the question if the question said it is adiabatic so then the q is zero so when the question says it is non adiabatic or there is q that is absorbed or released from that compressor so we should not consider q is equal to zero pe and ke we can neglect because of we can consider this compressor is in stationary so the mass balance is just similar the energy balance we rearrange after we neglect what is not involved so we have here the enthalpy and also the w but this time the w is positive not negative the turbine is negative but the compressor is positive so lastly it will become like this next we go to pump so the function of the pump 
is to give enough pressure for a fluid to flow from below to above. But for pump, we are going to give pressure to compress liquid. So we have to consider that the density and also the specific volumes are constant. And the process of pumping is isothermal. So that's why we will get delta U is equal to CVDT is equal to zero. So when we look at the mass balance and also at the energy balance, the mass balance is still the same. M in is equal to M out. It's just a flow, M in and so M out. But the energy balance is quite complicated. It's not actually complicated, just that we want to relate the pressure with the energy balance. Okay, by using the first law of thermodynamics, okay, we rearrange back. So from here, okay, so we will get H2 minus H1 after we rearrange. And in order to relate the W with the pressure, we are going to supply pressure. So we need to know how much work that is needed by the pump to give pressure to the fluid. So this Ke and also Pe can be neglected out. So now we have only H, H2 minus H1. But in order to relate it with pressure, we have to replace the enthalpy equation with U plus PV. U2 minus U1 plus PV2 minus PV1. But because of it is isothermal and the delta U is equal to zero, so that is why U2 minus U1 is equal to zero. And we simplify it into this. M PV2 minus PV1 and we further simplify it until we get P2 minus P1 in this bracket. Okay, so this is how we relate the work with the pressure. Next, we go to throttling valve. So the function of throttling valve is to restrict the flow of the fluid so that it will give a significant pressure drop. So this throttling valve, it is commonly used in refrigeration and also air conditioning in which it will produce a pressure drop accompanied by the large drop in temperature. So other than pressure, it will also affect the temperature. So same as before, we are going to identify what should we neglect. Q, W, P, E and also K, E we can neglect. But still Q we should consider based on the question. So for the mass balance, it is very simple. Mass inlet is equal to mass exit. But for energy balance, after we neglect all Q, W, P, E and also K, E, we will get M inlet, H inlet is equal to M exit, H exit. So because of M inlet is equal to M exit, so it will become H inlet is equal to H exit. So means that the enthalpy for inlet and also outlet are similar. So when it is similar, so we realize that this throttling valve is actually isentalpic. What is isentalpic? Isentalpic when both inlet and also outlet the enthalpy is similar. So we call it as isentalpic. Next we go to heat exchanger. So heat exchanger is a device where two moving fluid streams exchange heat without mixing. So we are going to reduce the temperature in one stream by using another streams. The simple example for heat exchanger is shell and tube or condenser. So let us look at this figure. Okay, so this is the cross-sectional diagram for heat exchanger. So basically we can see two different streams. First is fluid A and second is fluid B. So they will exchange the heat without mixing. So heat will be transferred from the hot fluid into the cold fluid. So that is how they exchange the heat. But some of the heat will be released to the surrounding if the heat exchanger is not insulated. So usually heat exchanger will be insulated. So as usual, we neglect one by one what is not involved. First, we look at Q. Q, you should consider based on the question. If let's say the question mentioned to you, it is adiabatic, so Q is zero. If it is mentioned to you, it is non-adiabatic, or there are some heat will be released, or some heat is channeled into 
the heat exchanger so q is not equal to zero but for w ke and pe they are all zero because in heat exchanger no work is needed same goes to ke and pe it is not moving it is stationary so it is neglected so we look one by one the mass balance and also the energy balance in order to construct the mass balance and also the energy balance we should identify which stream is inlet and which stream is outlet for stream 1 and also stream 3 it is inlet but for stream 2 and also stream 4 it is outlet for mass balance for mass balance we should consider mass inlet is equal to mass outlet we should gather what is inlet here and what is outlet here m1 and n3 is inlet so m1 plus n3 is equal to outlet what is outlet stream 2 and also stream 4 so that is why m2 plus m4 same goes to energy balance okay so the inlet is equal to outlet but it is energy balance after we have neglect q w k e and also p e so it will become h only the enthalpy okay for all device when it comes to first law of thermodynamics for open system when the other is neglected the only that is considered is enthalpy so that is why for inlet we have only m1 h1 plus m3 h3 the enthalpy for stream 1 plus enthalpy for stream 3 this is inlet 1 and 3 for outlet it is stream 2 and also stream 4 so enthalpy at stream 2 plus enthalpy at stream 4 so this is how we construct the energy balance for heat exchanger so the tips for heat exchanger first when you get the question label which one is the inlet and which one is the outlet it will be very useful for you to start the calculation so i think that's all for this video today we have covered about the first law of thermodynamics for open system so i hope you can differentiate the first law of thermodynamics for closed system and also open system and do not get confused so i think that's all for me thank you and assalamualaikum